before we get into this video, I'd like to mention I'm planning to upload a video essay every Wednesday and Sunday. Request anything from film, TV, or even games you'd like to see me analyze in the comments down below. Thanks for the support, guys, and enjoy the video. So, the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer just dropped, and I've got to say, it was the best trailer for a Spider-Man movie I've seen since The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And no, I'm not kidding, the trailers for The Amazing Spider-Man 2 were actually pretty good. Unfortunately, the movie couldn't live up to the hype. So, this movie is post-Avengers Endgame, and that makes for a really interesting story. I said I was mostly done with Marvel in my previous video, but now this trailer is out, I have near enough completely changed my mind. And for many reasons. But the main reason I'm sticking around is probably not the reason you all think that it is. You probably all think I really like the direction they're taking the MCU with the whole multiverse route. And you would be right, as I really do like that idea, and I can't wait till they explore more of that in Far From Home. But the main reason that I'm sticking around for more movies to come in the MCU is because of one sustaining character. And that is Peter Parker himself. Previously, I'd also mentioned that Peter Parker would be the last lingering hope for me in the MCU, as he's the only character in my personal opinion who carries any emotional weight to him, and that is because of his connection to Tony Stark. Even though this was the case for me personally, Marvel really did look like the direction they were heading were to make Captain Marvel the face of the MCU, and I was originally really open to that idea, but after I saw the Captain Marvel movie and her in Endgame, not only does she have the worst setup to become the face of the MCU, I also really do not like her character at all. There is something just about Carol that I don't like too much. Now I'm hoping that her character improves throughout the duration of Phase 4, but right now, for me, she definitely is not the right choice for the new Iron Man of the MCU. But guess who is? That's right, Spider-Man. Now, a lot of people will be annoyed that Peter is labelled as the new Iron Man by a lot of people, and even in the Farm From Home trailer itself. But I'll explain as my closing point to this video why this isn't such a bad thing, and definitely isn't what you think it means. But first, let's explore the idea of why Peter is the perfect choice going forward to be the face of the MCU after Tony Stark. Number 1. His connection to Stark. What a better way to carry the emotional weight of the franchise forward than to make the new face of the MCU the very literal person Tony Stark saw himself in and had faith in. There was a reason Tony recruited Peter in Civil War rather than someone like Daredevil for example, and that's because Tony saw himself in Peter. Tony saw a smart kid who just wanted to do the right thing, which is a similar set of morals to what Tony has. Now while this may be a same trait to these characters, I just want to reiterate that this does not mean that these are the same character. Tony just sees someone to take his place and carry his legacy as Earth's best defender, not in the next Iron Man, but as Spider-Man. Number 2. Spider-Man Far From Home is the first movie post-Endgame. Now, on the surface, you could have put any movie straight after Endgame to make this point, but a Spider-Man movie is close to genius. This movie will explore the ramifications of the snap more than any other Marvel movie could. Why? Because every Spider-Man story told in the MCU is the most grounded story you can get. Compared to the other superheroes, Peter Parker is just a kid who goes to school. And this movie will explore the ramifications of the snap on a more grounded level. For example, the effects it had on Peter's classmates, teachers, friends, his aunt, and just random everyday people. Something a cosmic movie like Captain Marvel couldn't do, or an interdimensional movie like Doctor Strange couldn't do either. But Spider-Man is Spider-Man, and he's just a kid from Queens. Number 3. Peter Parker will grow into the role. Not only is he the one to carry the most emotional weight of the MCU going forward, Peter will also have to grow into the role as becoming, as the comics state, the world's greatest superhero. A big part of Spider-Man's character in the MCU is he always thinks he's below everyone and always doubts himself. For example, in the trailer, he asks if anyone else can deal with the problem in Thor or Captain Marvel. Peter also explains he's just a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, showing his doubt. This means throughout the course of the MCU, he could grow into the role of being the leader and the face of the MCU, which would make for some great stories and character development, which would further add more emotional weight to Peter's character. Peter Parker is also just a kid, and also compared to the rest of the Avengers like Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange and Black Panther, he is the complete underdog. So to see him rise to the top and become the greatest superhero the world has ever seen since Iron Man would be fantastic to see. Now the problem with giving the role to someone like Captain Marvel would mean that she's already, other than Thor, the most powerful Avenger. She has nothing to prove, nothing to show. Everybody already knows what she can do. But Peter, Peter has to work for it. Making a more satisfying face for the MCU and a more satisfying character arc come the end of Phase 4, 5 or 6. 
If the team at Marvel Studios decide to go down this route, it would make Spider-Man the greatest character the MCU has ever seen. Now let me cover why Peter won't become Iron Man Jr. Iron Man is Iron Man, Tony Stark is Tony Stark, Tony Stark is not Peter Parker, and Peter Parker is not Tony Stark. One thing that people don't seem to understand is that Peter will be taking Tony's role as the face of the MCU, not becoming the new Iron Man, even though the trailers might make it seem so. Peter will be Spider-Man and that is that. He will take the role but will not be Iron Man Jr. Now maybe Peter was kind of in Iron Man's shadow in Civil War slash Homecoming, but this isn't the case anymore. I'm sure as Phase 4 goes on, Peter will not be referred to as Iron Man Jr. and it's nothing you need to worry about. So don't worry about that, Peter is simply just going to become the face of the MCU. Plus, Spider-Man is already the face of Marvel Comics. He is the world's most popular superhero alongside Batman and Superman, so it just makes sense for Spider-Man to become the face of the MCU going forward. And that is why Peter Parker is the most logical person to be the face of the MCU. Now I'm thinking of expanding and doing more video essays about a variety of topics, films and TV shows. I love doing MCU stuff as it's my favourite film franchise of all time, but I like to diverse now and again. I have a video essay planned about Benedict Cumberbatch's Sherlock Holmes, and I'm also interested in doing a video essay on the Clone Wars TV show. But that's for the future as of now. Request anything you'd like to see below. My next video that will be released on either Sunday or Wednesday in a week's time is a video about Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man Homecoming and comparing them. I'll also be collabing on Jack from the Mad Pizza on that video as well. Also expect an in-detailed Avengers Endgame review soon in the next month or two as well. Remember to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned on Sunday for my next video. Thanks for watching.